So there are people selling logos online and making hundreds of thousands of dollars doing it. The thing is, now we can generate logos using AI and with just a little bit of touch-up work, create something that is truly beautiful. These are some logos that I've been able to make. See, I made a video a few days ago going over several digital products that you can make using AI. And in this video, I wanna cover logos with AI, making logos with AI. Today, we're looking at examples of people already selling logos online and how much money we could make. Then we'll jump into Midjourney and create a bunch of different logos in all kinds of unique styles. And I'll give you some Midjourney prompt tips and tricks to get the best looking images. And then we'll go over fixing all of the issues that Midjourney usually creates to leave you with an end product that is really high quality and professional looking. So without further ado, let's get right into it. If you plan on monetizing your logos, then picking a strategy will help you create a better product. And there are two strategies when it comes to logo designs. There are made to order logos where someone is essentially hiring you to create a custom logo for their business, or there are logo templates. We'll talk about each one, but this will determine how you're generating your logos, how passive it is, and where you're selling them online. Let's start with the logo templates. Now, this is a logo template shop where you pay $12 and you'll get a link to edit this logo file. You'll be able to change the text, move the elements around, and likely change the color of the font and customize it to your needs, but it'll still maintain the same look. We'll be using AI to generate all of the graphics and colors, and it'll give us an idea of what fonts to use. A logo template is simply a pre-made logo that your customer would be able to edit for free on a website like Canva. And I'll show you exactly how this works later. This exact shop has over 52,000 sales, which means with their average price of at least $10, they've made over $520,000. Just remember that a lot of their packages cost way more than $10. So this shop could have easily made millions and $520,000 is a very conservative estimate. After you've paid all of the fees with a digital product, you're left with about a 91% profit margin. Now this shop is doing the almost exact same thing and has made close to $354,000 doing it. Now the pre-made logos are going to be a much more passive business model long-term but it'll take more time for you to start getting sales up front since you have to build up a large catalog of logos for people to buy. Now for logos made to order or just custom logos, you're usually going to be able to charge a little bit more since you're selling a service and not just a pre-made logo. Now this shop called Logo Lane has only about 13,000 sales. Now for one of their custom logos, they're charging between $39 and $130, which means they've made anywhere between $515,000 and $1.7 million just from their Etsy shop. Again, about a 91% profit margin on the digital product, but because this is a service, you could also list it for sale on a website like Fiverr. This Fiverr gig has over 3,300 reviews and she's charging anywhere from 80 to $170. That means that she's made at least between $268,000 and $570,000 just from this gig. Here's another gig with over 9,000 reviews and they're charging between $50 and $130, which comes out to somewhere between $462,000 and $1.2 million. Now they are selling good logos, don't get me wrong, but just nothing too crazy. Now providing a logo design service with logos made to order is a little bit more of a side hustle business model where you're only going to be working after you've already been paid. If you start on Etsy, there's no reason why you couldn't list a custom logo service and logo templates in the same shop. Now to access the Midjourney chatbot, you'll need a program called Discord. If you don't have an account already, then you can sign up for Discord for free using your email. And I found it runs better if you download the program to your computer. Then we'll have to head over to the Midjourney website and just click on join the beta. This will open Discord and connect you to the Midjourney server. Now Midjourney costs $10 a month to access the general commercial terms and $30 a month if you want unlimited image generation. I pay for the $30 a month plan, plus $20 a month for stealth mode so that I can generate images in private without everybody else seeing them. Now we're going to start making some logos. If you've never generated an image before, we'll just come down to the chat and type a forward slash and then click on imagine. And then we'll type out our first logo idea. In this example, I'm going to ask for a logo for a law firm simple clean logo white background and then just hit enter and i'm going to enter a couple more ideas 
So now we just wait. I've initiated a few images and we just have to wait for them to generate. Now, if the first batch of images isn't great, then we could just click this little reroll button and it'll give us four brand new images. And if you really dislike an image, then we can add a reaction and delete it from the chat so that we're not cluttered up with bad generations. Now, once we have an image that looks like it has potential, we can make it bigger by hitting the upscale button that's below it. Now, the entire process is basically just trying different prompts and then re-rolling the images until we get something that works. Now, this whole process took me about 10 minutes because the AI was acting really slow, but from it, we got four really good logos. And now I've upscaled the best looking logos so that we can move on. Now, crafting a great prompt is literally the hardest part of making logos. And while it can take a while, what I'm about to show you is an absolute game changer. After you've upscaled the image, click on the web button and it'll take you to a page like this. And this page is super useful because it breaks down how the AI is reading each prompt in particular segments. And you can find sample images from each one of those segments. So you can see how it's referencing different pictures. If we just scroll down a little bit more, I can see even more examples of similar logos that other people have created, as well as the prompts that they used to make those images. So if you can't figure out how to get a particular style, you can kind of come and spy on see what's working for other people. This is really worth looking through, and you can also hover over an image and click copy and copy prompt to test it out for yourself. Let me show you some of the other images that I was able to create using this same method. As you can see, I had a ton of fun with this and got kind of carried away generating tons of images, but I wanted to show you the different types of images that I was able to make. I'll give you a link down below for some sample images and all of the ones that I'm showing you in this video, as well as the prompts that I used to create them. I wanted to see what kind of mascot logos I could generate, and I was pretty happy with the results here. Especially, I think these corgis came out really good. This raven logo looks awesome, and these sharks look really good too. I was super happy with this squid character, and then I just made this wasabi ball character, which I think came out pretty cute too. Now, these are some other images that I was able to generate, and we'll go over fixing them up in the next steps. But again, I'll leave a link down below so you can check them out as well as the prompts that went with them. Now, if you're following along, you should have all of the logos that you want to use upscaled at this point. And now this next step is what really brings everything to life. We'll have to go back into Discord, click the upscale image, and hit open in browser. And then we can just right click and save to downloads. Now, if you want to take your logos to the next level to be able to compete with the shops that we looked at in the beginning of this video, that are making literally hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, then you'll probably want to invest in a program called Adobe Illustrator. It's $21 a month, which I know does add up, but let me show you what it's capable of. Now, this is where it gets just slightly more technical, but I know that you can do it because we only need Illustrator for just one feature. Assuming that you've signed up, downloaded, and opened up Illustrator on your computer, then we're just going to click on the letter preset because it really doesn't matter. Now, I've opened the file where I saved all of my AI images, and for right now, I'm going to drag and drop one in. I'm using this bull image for the first example. And if I zoom in really close to the eye, do you see how blurry it is? We also can't remove it from the background. This really isn't a usable logo at the moment. But if I just click on the image so that it's highlighted, there's a button called Image Trace that appears on the right side of the screen. If I click that button, it transforms the logo into a real vector file in real time. I can adjust the threshold on the left-hand side of the screen to add or subtract details, and I can click the Ignore White button to completely remove the white background. If I zoom back into the eye, you can see that we have super crisp and clean lines. A vector logo can scale as large or as small as we need it without losing any quality. Now back on the right hand side of the screen, if I just hit expand, it locks in our changes and fully converts the image into a real vector file, a super clean black logo. Now let's go through a few more examples so you can see just how powerful this really is. Now let's do this chef's hat logo. So I'll drag it in, I'll hit image trace, then I can come over to the left and adjust the threshold to get the most amount of detail out of the logo. That looks good, I'll click ignore white and then just click expand. Now the issue left is all of this text that I have to remove. If I just double click on the logo and I click and drag to select the text, I can just click delete. Then I can delete all of these other elements that I don't need. If I wanna delete these other two lines, double click, click on each line and just hit the delete key on the keyboard. Now I'm left with a super clean chef's hat logo. Now let's try this palm tree. So I'll drag it in, 
hit image trace, adjust the threshold just slightly, hit ignore white, and just click expand. And boom, we're done with that logo as well. Now let's try an example if we have a colored logo like this coffee mug right here. So if there are colors in it, then we just have to do things a little bit differently. First, we'll hit image trace, and then we'll come up to the presets and we'll change it to three colors, since there's only about three colors in this logo. There's no need to hit ignore white, so we'll just leave that as is. Then we'll just come over, click expand. And if I double click on the brown background, I should be able to slide it away and delete it. And we're left with a super clean logo. Now we can even do batches of images all at once. So I've dragged in four of the chess logos that I've created. I'm going to simply hit image trace. This one's super easy since it's just a black and white logo. Just the threshold a little bit, expand. And this one's the same process. We will just hit image trace, adjust the threshold. Super easy process for these black and white logos. Now for logos with darker backgrounds, we have to invert the colors so that the background will appear white and the foreground will appear black. So here's an example image. What we first do is click embed and then up in the top corner, if we go to the edit tab and go to edit colors, we can just click invert colors. Now here we can just follow the same steps as before. We'll just click image trace. You'll see it traces it out. We can adjust the threshold. And if we click ignore white, again, we're left with a super clean logo. And we'll do the same exact steps over here. We will embed it. We'll click edit colors and invert colors. And now if we click our image trace, we're left with a black and white logo. We'll just have to adjust the threshold, invert the white or ignore the white rather. And right there, almost perfect. And we'll just click expand. And then again, we just have to double click on any one of these logos and start deleting all of the text. So you can change the color to white if it's easier to see. Double click on the logo, select the text and hit the delete key. And it really is just that easy. Double click the logo, select the text, hit delete, select the text and hit delete. Now the only other complicated situation is if you have a mascot logo. So let me drag in this owl and let's see what we can do with it. So first we'll image trace and it turns it black and white. So we need to choose the preset that is 16 colors. So we'll choose 16 colors right there and it'll process. And as you can see, it's done a really good job of recreating this logo. Next, we can adjust the paths or the colors if we need to, but I'm just gonna hit expand. We can double click it and then just start deleting all of the elements that we don't want. So we can delete this blue background, the little blue that's above his head, all the errors that are on his side. And there we go. Now, this logo is pretty much completely done as well. I'll just move him over with all of our other ones. Now I've managed to generate and vectorize all of these logos in under 20 minutes. Now to export one of our vector images, what we have to do is select the vector. We'll click file, export selection. We can name it right here if we want to. Just name it palm tree. And then make sure that the format SVG is selected. That's really important. And then we'll just click export asset. And now here it is in our file. Now this really isn't that hard. It took me only about 10 minutes to vectorize all of the images that you'll see in this video. You really do need Illustrator for this. I have not been able to find a paid tool or a free tool anywhere online that even comes close to the quality that Illustrator provides. Now, since we've converted the actual AI image into a real logo file, it's time to complete the final step, which is preparing the logo in Canva. Now on Canva's website, I'm just going to create a new document and bring in my original logo file with the text and everything. This was from the AI. Then I'm going to bring on top of it the SVG file that we created and exported out of Illustrator. And I'm going to size it up and recolor it and just move it to where it needs to be. Then on top of where the text is supposed to be, I'm going to put a text box and then I'm just going to look for a font that matches best. Okay, so I think this one looks good. And I'll try and match the color based on what the image provides. Now, what I like to do is copy the image and delete it from the first page. And then I like to add it to the second page so that we still have all of the colors saved in Canva so that we can sample them in a second. Then I'm gonna go back to the first page that we were just working on and I'll change the background color to what the original image had. Now everything is essentially done if you're selling this as a service. Now I'm just going to speed this up and go through all of the other logos that I want to create for this project.
You can just enter your customer's business name and share the logo with them. You could delete the background or change the background colors or do anything that you need to with this logo. But if you're selling these on Etsy, then there's a few more steps. If you're selling as a template on somewhere like Etsy, then we'll have to come to the top right and hit share template link. And what this does is every time you make a sale, the customer gets a copy of this logo template where they'll be able to fill out their own information and customize it however they need to. And they don't even have to pay for Canva to be able to do this. Now, this is the link that your customer will receive after they've purchased the logo from you. Now, I'll give you a link to this template file down below this video in exchange for you clicking subscribe. Now, before you go try this for yourself, you should be aware of a few big issues. First is that Illustrator really isn't perfect. And if you have really highly detailed images like this, they won't turn out well as a final product. But I don't think that this is going to be a problem for very long. See, Midjourney has only been out for about eight months and they announced that version five should be coming out this week. So if we went from the first AI images looking like this to now having images like these, I think over the course of the next year, the images are just going to become more outstanding. Second is to be aware of the cost. See, between the Midjourney AI, Canva's subscription, and using Adobe Illustrator, you could be paying anywhere from $44 to $80 a month, depending on the plans that you're using. But if you were committed to actually making this work, you could have a business that makes hundreds of thousands of dollars each year. You would just have to get good at it. It would also be a good idea to learn how to use some mockups like these to add your logos to some kind of branding like business cards. I think this would help them sell really well and help you stand out from all of the competition. You can get free mockups on a website like RawPixel and download them and use them completely for free. We're making our own AI mockups in an upcoming video, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. And also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram.